Hi, a warm welcome to all our students and esteemed guests. It is a pleasure to have you all here today. My name is Mihir, and we are here to wrap up the pre-incubation program 3.0 with the Pitch Fest. Now, I would like to inform you that this session is being recorded for quality purposes, and uh, we would like to thank I am uh, Lucknow Enterprise Incubation Center for making it possible. I would also like to extend our gratitude to all our esteemed guests, Mr. Dave Lapati, Dr. D. Chakrapani, and Dr. Jhansi for gracing us with their presence and active participation. Your presence makes this event even more special. Now, as you all know, this is our third collaboration with I am Lucknow Enterprise Incubation Center, and we are super thrilled about it. We would like to thank Arunode Bajpai and his entire team for their support in making this program a success. So to begin with, I would go ahead and like to invite Mr. Arunode Bajpai, an entrepreneur, the COO of the incubation operation I am to say a few words. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mir. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, exciting years uh, together. We have, uh, you know, it is an absolutely an overwhelming experience. And uh, thanks to Dr. Day and the team of uh, Moonpreneur that we are here at the end of the third court. And there are uh, notable... Uh, you know, achievements of, of this program, which I would like to highlight in terms of numbers and in, in terms of uh, sheer outcomes. So in terms of number, if I would uh, touch upon is the number of participants uh, were over 350 participants participated and trained to this program and they have gone through the entire cycle of uh, you know how to create enterprise and uh, starting their own uh, journey and uh, out of 350 plus uh, participants 60 persons being women that's the biggest thing i would uh, like to highlight apart from uh, you know uh, women led startups also got incubated with us there are six plus uh, startups which are a part of uh, our incubator now. And I have shared uh, in the past that there were a few startups and uh, one uh, notable uh, achievement of such startup which has gone through, uh, I think in cohort two, it was part of cohort two, Tezi Pay. And Tezi Pay eventually uh, was part of another program of ours and after that, we have incubated it. So he has uh, been all through the process of setting up enterprise uh, and uh, learning through this program. So these founders were, I think, Narayan, uh, Mohit, Sharma, and Krishnan. And they have created this, uh, uh, this company called Tezipi. This is a fintech company. And uh, th this is incubated right now with us. And uh, the progress uh, is only in the first year, they are sitting on uh, y, oh, y revenue of 70 lakhs. And they've been waiting for a lot of licenses uh, and RBI approval is also pending. So I think we are on a right journey. And uh, through this program, uh, these are the only few I can talk about uh, that the impact is also created and we expect that in coming years these numbers will surely increase and uh, also like to announce that uh, we would again uh, be running one more uh, cohort along with the Moonpreneur team and uh, our team is IIML EIC's team. This is would be a fourth cohort. And uh, looking forward to engage, collaborate with, uh, you know, enterprising minds 
young uh, entrepreneurs are to be developed and uh, this is would be a great contribution to a growing economy of india and thanks uh, everyone for having me again and uh, looking forward to be a part of it and uh, as always i am open to discuss and deliberate with new uh, minds thanks a lot thank you uh, mr bashpai it is indeed an honor for us to be collaborating with you fourth time in a row and a big big applause for uh, this cohort 4.0 so now um, absolutely so now this is the app moment to <clears throat> invite alok jain the co-founder and ceo of moonpreneur over to you alok thanks a lot mayor uh, so uh, amazing to hear uh, uh, mr bajpay i think especially the impact in such a short time we are a very young company and uh, seeing all of this and uh, trust from somebody like i am l e i c uh, where we are going for the fourth cohort mean a lot to us so thanks for the opportunity really appreciate uh, my name is alok jain i am co-founder and ceo of moonpreneur and on behalf of uh, our moonpreneur family i like to welcome all of our guests panelists and participant of the finale of a uh, pre incubation program cohort 3.0 uh, pitch fest um as uh, mr bajpay said uh, uh, we had over 350 participants uh, so far in various cohort uh, this one we had over 115 student enrolled and today we are very excited to see eight teams uh, that are participating in the pitch fest um so first one thing i like to remind before we dive in here uh, that all our participants uh, whether what happened today uh, you all are winners right uh, the call it a, a, a pursuit of happiness um, i think uh, it's really happiness in the pursuit right uh, this is uh, one of the video i was just watching yesterday uh, very impactful um, it's it's really about i mean if you see uh, and 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 let me recall a good example uh, suppose if you go to a gym right and uh, you build six packs it's not really about that six packs that build your esteem or build your character it's waking up every day going to the gym spending time there having a disciplined diet every day right that's build your character so it's really the happiness in the pursuit not really the pursuit of happiness but with that uh, i think you all guys are doing this whole uh, 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 pursuit of entrepreneurship and that's where the whole happiness should be driving um again entrepreneurship is uh, uh, built on purposeful uh, social relationships and your out of box thinking and problem solving skills uh, will really benefit you and the society um i think uh, the the timing is right india has over 90000 startups again when it comes to success and 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 so entire market is shifting um we had at some point of time over 100 uh, uh, and seven unicorns that number might have shifted but again it, the valuations are just uh, that uh, the more timing but there is a huge lineup of all the gazelles and cheetahs and all kind of things so the timing is right and you have amazing support i mean um, who would have you thought like uh, better than i am uh, lucknow eic um to guide you uh, in 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 several partnership what they have um so again we are certainly humbled by our association um uh, of uh, eic uh, special thanks to also uh, yamini bhushan uh, uh, pandey ji md of iml eic and the entire team uh, for the unwavering uh, com commitment to this program and of course uh, we can't thank enough uh, uh, mr devi lapati who has who is a uh, president and ceo of uh, s2 tech and fortune fund and he has been supporting us uh, pretty much since our uh, like very first cohort um and then uh, also like to thanks uh, uh, andhra mahila sabha and enriva um uh, 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 jhasi ma'am uh, for your team uh, for being an integral part of uh, our so far journey and uh, uh, also dr d chakrapani um, who is our esteemed guest and an ex uh, bureaucrat um who has been guiding us um uh, throughout this journey um and then uh, the warm welcome to our all panelists uh, ketki agrawal ritesh gupta suyog desh pande and ajay patel thanks again for joining us today um so just uh, 
quick thing about our pre-incubation program uh, that's also known as uh, ELDP uh, that's growing across the globe. Uh, we began with a small idea and today we have expanded across India, USA and Latin America uh, in partnership with uh, prestigious institutes like uh, various IITs, IIMs, uh, Thai and several universities like uh, Nicaragua, El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, Costa Rica and so on. Uh, so again, back to today's session, I'm uh, really confident that each of you will present innovative solutions uh, to the problem you have identified. Um, and I wish all the best to our eight uh, uh, finalist teams. Uh, may you soar uh, to greater heights and achieve remarkable success. Uh, uh, and certainly your journey doesn't stop here. Basically, I'll say this is a starting point, right? And, and, and there is a long way to go, but I think uh, just keep this in mind. This is really the happiness uh, of the pursuit, not other way around. Uh, thank you again and good luck. Absolutely. Thanks, Alok. And uh, now I would like to go ahead and introduce our esteemed panelists who will be judging the pitch fest today. And uh, we have with us Ketki Agarwal, the president and CTO of A5G Networks, Inc. We have Ritesh Gupta, the managing director and COO of Green Sky at Goldman Sachs. We have Suyog Deshpande, the co-founder of webless.ai. And we have Vikram Singla, the senior director of strategy and business development supply chain at Oracle. A warm welcome to all our panelists for today's Pitch Fest. And now it is time to get started with the Pitch Fest. So we have eight teams participating in the finale and they are uh, Kaushal Up, Bioflame, Headless E-Commerce, Gromi, Virtual Detox, Rishi Barter's Agritech and Skynect. And finally, uh, Chris Ena. Now, each team will get eight minutes to pitch their idea, including the four-minute Q&A uh, session with the pitch uh, with the judges. And uh, we'll be calling each team one by one where we present their pitch, and then the uh, Q&A session will start. So for the first team, I would go ahead and like to invite team Gromi, uh, group number 15. So let's have their pitch. Hi everyone, this is Piyush. The name of my startup is Gromi, Instilling Togetherness. So what do we do at Gromi? At Gromi, we offer a unique technology-driven solution that transforms gardening into a guided, playful, and rewarding journey. We make gardening easy, affordable, and accessible to all, helping our customers cultivate not just plants, but joy and satisfaction in their urban spaces. So what pain point are we trying to solve? pain point that we are trying to solve is unavailability of standard and assisted gardening facilities, the limited space, the inconsistent support, and the boring or monotonous experience of gardening. Our solution. At Gromi, we provide personalized and assisted gardening experiences through our products, services, and product service systems. So what does Gromi offers? Gromi offers its products and services, which are Gromi DIY kits, Gromi ecosystem, Gromi essentials, and Gromi support. So let me tell you more about our products. Gromi DIY kits. Gromi DIY kit provides complete setup for home gardening in different configurations with an option for upgradation. Gromi ecosystem, eager to connect and practice how others are doing it. Gromi ecosystem is the destination for you. Learn and share your Gromis with others. Gromi essentials is gardening your patient. Find the best tools, accessories, and plant care products like travel, seed kits, puner, soil hydration meters, and many more. Gromi support. Curious about when to harvest your homegrown organic vegetables and need guidance? Connect to our experts and plan your next sowing cycle. So to whom do we provide these services? Our target customers include children in the 8 to 15 years of age group, people who are going to retire, enterprising men and women, and people who want to spend more time with their children. So our total addressable market is 3000 crores. Our serviceable addressable market is 90 crores. And our serviceable optimable market is about 1.8 crores for this year. So having our estimates of serviceable obtainable market, let us dive deep on competitor analysis. Nurturing Green, Ogao and Birthright are some of our 
major competitors about brand positioning how Gromi is positioned Gromi is positioned as a technology driven brand for playful and ready to use gardening harvest solutions range of products includes plants and vegetables home decor and corporate gardening solutions USPs our USPs include continuously guided and supported product gamified playful gardening experience for everyone guarantees ready to use harvest at your home easy and aff affordable upgradation complete garden experience at home now let us have a look at our SWOT analysis let us have a look at our business model about our future roadmap so now more about our Gromi team the support that we require is idea sharpening product development and go-to-market support incubation support and seed funding Okay, your time with the judges starts now. Hey, so I'll jump in. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Um, excellent. Yes, can hear. So I had one question. Like, I, I'm curious to understand. You said technology based and fun. Can you tell a little bit more about Piyush? Like, what what do you mean? And explain. You know how you are differentiating yourself based on technology and fun. So right now, what we are seeing in the market, for example, if we take our computer and nurturing green, then we are seeing that they are providing the plants which can like grow. They are just the plants. They are not technology integrated. For example, if you are growing our vegetables, we are given if we have given our DIY kits, grow me DIY kits to our customers, and we want like them to grow. Like for example, they want to have mint grown in their home. So if if they are growing mint or some kind of vegetables, so for that, how much growth have been? they are in the plants and how they are going whether there is some fungus accumulating on the leaves or whether to eat them or not for this we are integrating the uh, diy kits with the technology so that they can uh, integrate it with the mobile phone application and they can uh, we can also help them and more of the ideas like uh, how we can gamify it for example if you have been through a game called talking tom then it is a total gamified experience of how every time we have to brush talking Tom's teeth and give them give it a bath. So similarly, we have I am just gaming. I'm using gamification as a business strategy for uh, for bringing satisfaction and joy in the gardening ex experiences. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. I have a um, I have a question around your ICP. Um, the uh, you mentioned a few different type of personas that you are going after. Um, so just curious to know, how do you prioritize them? And secondly, there is another lens through which we can look at it, which is people who are in urban setting who do not actually have much space to plant anything. So the photo that you showed, which was uh, somebody standing in the balcony and having pots in the balcony with the plants. Whereas there is a completely different persona with people having actually a lot of like a big backyard, but don't understand how to use it to grow the food, right? And so on on that spectrum of different type of personas, different type of needs, uh, who are you going after first among the list of personas that you mentioned there? First, we will be going through the children which are in the age group 8 to 15. And then we will be going to enterprising men and women. I see. And, because we and... are, we, yeah. Because we are first of all, we are selling our product, which is which is DIY uh, grooming kits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for that, uh, children in the age group eight to fifteen, and the enterprising men and women would be our first customers. Got it. And between the scale of urban to suburban, where lack of space to a lot of space but not used. How do you how do you go? So right now. For the first year, we are planning to go for the urban only. We are not planning to go for the places which have a lot ample amount of area for, because there our product would not find any importance because they already they can buy their own seat. Why to come with us? So I am targeting only those customers which have less urban space. For example, if someone is living in the, for example, if you take Cleo County in the Noida. So if someone is living over there and they do not have spaces in their house, so they can also uh, they can also sow their own vegetables because you know uh sowing you know eating vegetables is every every household need nowadays every evening every morning somebody or the other 
every time want vegetables and mints and coriander and those type of things so for that we can like attach joy and satisfaction by giving them home grown vegetables correct i have one follow up question but i'll wait in case other judges have other questions sure sir sure sir uh, do you have any uh, existing customers or uh, you're going to launch this product to market no right now we do not have any existing customer the current phase is the ideation phase second left and uh, how are you planning to reach uh, to your customer base uh we will be first developing up developing our product first refinement on of the idea will be done in the next one month for the next three month uh, more of the product development and design and furthermore we will be uh, taking our product to first like 20 customers then 40 customers then 100 and 200 and then we will be reiterating reiterating on our product development part then when the product is uh, prepared then we will be launching it uh, but like how are you planning to reach those 20 customers or 100 customers 200 customers are you uh, planning to do online um, reach or how are you planning to do it online reach also first we will be going through uh, like which which is my own uh, circle then we will be reaching out to like with the word of mouth then we will be reaching out to other people this is like uh, what i am thinking as of now but when idea refine, refinement would be done, then it would be much uh, precise. Okay, and that will be time. Uh, thank you, Group 15, for the wonderful presentation. And uh, now we would like to go ahead and invite uh, Group 15, Kaushal, up. Thank you. Greetings to all. We are Kaushal Up. Skill is the new currency. Our team includes Mrs. Nidhi Goel, our CEO, Ishita Goel, CTO, and myself, Chaitanya Goel, COO. At 30 years old, after losing his corporate job, Ishan finds himself with no other option but to explore entrepreneurship. Yet, he lacks the guidance, support, and resources to get started. He reaches out to SME entrepreneurs and sees their passion to grow, but they too lack the know-how. Conversations with retiring businessmen reveal a troubling trend. Many are shutting down their businesses, leading to loss of livelihood. He realizes he can either repeat his past path or take a bold step forward with Kaushal Up. Mentoring, workshops, community support, international know-how, government support and AI. We provide all these things at one single platform, Kaushal Up. Born out of a passion to transform India's economic landscape, Kaushal Up is a woman-led, skill-based learning platform. We focus on job creators rather than job seekers. Our vision is to enable India to become the job creator for the world through skill enhancement. Our mission is imparting skill-based learning to current and future entrepreneurs with focus on women entrepreneurship, ESG, AI-driven capabilities and working towards Vixit Bharat 2047. In the 2024 Union Budget, India's Honourable Finance Minister, Mrs. Nirmala Sitaraman, outlet a large fraction of budget on skill development for the youth. Our products include courses through LMS, marketing services, networking events, technology solutions including AI for skill centers, business counseling, international and national certifications, workshops and trainings. These will be available through our AI powered platform. AI will be included in user assessment to personalize learning pathways, interaction with AI tutors, predictive analysis and gamification. Our business model is aligned with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030 focusing on specific points under the broader category. We are already in discussion with the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, Geneva, and in process of signing an MOU with them for promoting their programs in Indian schools and colleges. The social impact return will be direct on women empowerment, environment sustainability, economic growth, and enhanced innovation. A revenue model includes LMS course fee, skill centers workshop and infra fee, business services and advisory fee, and revenue by events and member community. Our TAM is SME entrepreneurs all across India, which is over 6 crores. The SAM is the business clusters in UP, Delhi and Haryana due to their close proximity and high concentration of SME entrepreneurs. According to the competition analysis, there are 2-3 to three already existing companies in this area such as Udyog Vardhani in Western India and STC Skills in South India. We shall have 3 months each for product development and pilot. Thereafter, we shall start services for SME entrepreneurs. We will be moving on to retiring businessmen in September 26 and our future vision includes services for students and corporate employees third year onwards. 
We require industry networking, skill centers and mentors from IIML EIC along with technology, 3D printers and AI lab and funding support. We have shared our vision with IIML EIC for an entrepreneurial India through skill development. Our CEO Mrs. Nidhi Goel is a woman entrepreneur in education and healthcare and a social worker in Shri Agrasa and Jan Seva Sabha. Ishita Goel is an AI specialist and a United Nations young leader. Myself Chaitanya Goel, I am a student at IIT Kanpur and a secretary of the entrepreneurship cell of IIT Kanpur. We have our advisors mentioned here that from diverse field and help us grow our business in their own unique way. Thank you for your time and attention. Your time starts now. Hey, thank you, uh, Chaitanya. Very, <clears throat> very engaging and interesting presentation. One question I had was, uh, you would need a lot of content to be successful. Uh, how are you planning to develop that training educational content? Yes, sir. So, so first of all, we shall tie up with universities and reputed institutions to provide these courses and uh, skill workshops. And uh, we are already in, we already have a confirmed order with us for skill-based training of school and college students. It's in Europe and it's a highly reputed institute. And along with that, we shall design uh, courses on our LMS website and we shall set up workshops and skill centers in uh, uh, institutions in uh, Delhi and the nearby areas. So, so these are the few basic uh, ways we shall be uh, delivering the content. So, for example, would I, IIT Kanpur provide some content to you? Yes, sir. We can uh, request. Uh, we can approach uh, uh, ac academicians such as professors and uh, members in the SIIC IIT Kanpur, and uh, we shall be uh, contacting them in the future for uh, helping us uh, and uh, collaborating with us for the uh, uh, training okay. based. All right. Thank you. Uh, check one. Go ahead, Vikram. No, no, go, you go on. Uh, so I noticed that uh, in your business model, you are highlighting a few different revenue streams or, or the work that yes, you're going to do. And that is, uh, I'm just curious, why are you spreading yourself so thin between building a product like LMS to providing services to advisory to consulting? That's a lot of different type of revenue and business model, uh, 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 right? Going from day one. So how do you, how, how are you thinking about this? Yes, sir. So, uh, you said correctly, we are planning a lot of different activities. For that, we have developed our product timeline. We shall start with business counseling for SME entrepreneurs and we shall move on to uh, technology solutions and one by one, we shall pick up these uh, activities. Uh, one thing that we, have, we are already in, uh, we have uh, our CEO, Mrs. Nithi Goel is already attending uh, uh, seminars. Uh, she recently attended IC3 seminar in Yashobhumi and Eduverse Summit in AeroCity. And uh, as I already mentioned, we have a confirmed order with us uh, from a reputed institute in Europe. Uh, we shall start one by one. Uh, if uh, they could present the slides, uh, it would be better. I would be able to explain better. Uh, slide number nine, please. Uh, Moonpreneur, can you please present? Yes. Slide nine? Yeah, uh, so, sir. Uh, along with that, uh, we also we shall also have small ticket size courses, and uh, the average ticket size course would be ten thousand rupees for one course, and we shall have around ten to fifteen percent margin gross margin on that. By the end of year one, we shall start our actual services in March two thousand twenty five after our uh, product uh, development and uh, uh, product development and a uh, pilot. And by end of March twenty six, we uh, are targeting ten to fifteen lakh rupees gross margin. One minute left. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Uh... Yeah, my question was going to be like a bit similar, really. Uh, you know, so let's say even within your target market of uh, SMEs, are you segmenting that bit further to say which one is the most mature where you can, you know, because it's about the scaling up, right? So have you kind of done any analysis as to within SME as well, which subsector you're going to kind of scale up first and then go after others? Uh, so we have not yet uh, decided which sector we shall be going at first, but uh, we are already in talks with uh, businessmen and 
uh, industrialist uh, ma in manufacturing. Uh, we have talked to two uh, uh, two SME entrepreneurs in Delhi, in North Delhi area, in Bhavana and Mundka. And uh, we shall be uh, starting with them first. And then we shall expand, we shall expand our business to uh, many uh, other sectors as well. Okay. Right, time's up. Um, thank you so much, uh, Group 15, Kaushala. Very uh, nicely presented. And uh, now we would like to go ahead and inv invite Group number 17, Krisena. My name is Deepak Kumar Sharma. I welcome you all to Crescenza, where we are going to unlock the value through AI vision and age-based solutions. Today, businesses are really struggling to get the correct customer sentiments. A very small number of customers are responding to the feedback forms. Also, customer service representatives are selecting only happy customers to get the feedbacks. And there is no proactive way to know the dissatisfied customers. And ultimately, this is resulting to customer churn without getting the chance to improve the services. Vicenza's advanced computer vision and edge based solutions are going to offer a comprehensive approach to address these challenges, where Vicenza's emotion as a service is going to provide the result of customer sentiments. And these customer sentiments are being noted using the facial expressions, tones, and body languages using the program and cameras which are implemented at customer service desk. We are going to use the technology, which will be computer vision plus edge computing plus cloud plus APIs. And ultimately, whenever customer is there, customer expressions are going to be recorded in the camera and video streams will be analyzed by the as server. And this as server is going to return the responses into the business servers. Let's understand how our solution is going to solve the problem for banking industry. For an example, a customer goes to a bank and find out that there are a lot of unmanaged banking services inside the bank. If this converts that customer into a dissatisfied customer. On the event of his turn, when customer service representative logged in CRM for the customer account, customer's facial expressions, body language, and the tone is going to be recorded in the camera, which is implemented at customer service desk. As server process this data locally and send the result of customer sentiments to bank CRM server. So in one particular instance, the customer sentiments, which is highly dissatisfied, is going to be logged in the CRM. This feed will help to address other scenarios where bank management wants to know and wants to get a list of the branches with high number of dissatisfied customers. Also, if bank management wants to know that if there is a loyal customer and a high value customer is dissatisfied on a particular day, unnecessary actions can be taken. From the market opportunity aspect, computer vision is $25.41 billion market. Out of that, $8.89 billion market is related to the banking, retail, tourism, and manufacturing. We have selected and started with banking and retails, which is 5% of, of time, which is $1.27 billion of opportunities. We are looking for IML support to make our idea in reality, which includes AI ML lab access, a guidance from great mentors, network and connections, collaboration and partnerships, and funding opportunities. I, founder of Crescensa, have more than 13 years of experience in car OEM as well as telecom sectors. I work with different companies which are uh, world leader like AT&T, Comcast, Vodafone, Telstra, as well as in car OEM like General Motors and Daimler. I have around uh, eight plus years of experience in product management where I played different role as uh, product owner, product manager, senior product portfolio manager, and associate director. We invite you to join us on this transformative journey towards shaping the future of technology solutions. Together, let's create value, drive innovation, and unlock new possibilities. Thank you. Your time starts now. <clears throat> hey, Chris, and sir, the uh, have you? Uh, ha I'm assuming that your main customers are the banks for this product. Yeah. So to so, answer this, uh, uh, it is not just banks. It is uh, uh, retail plus banks plus uh, uh, telecom sector. So wherever customer churn is a really issue, and 
they want a prime intention uh, to to keep their customer satisfied and there is very high competition that is our target market okay got it and have you talked to like any of the banks and what is the initial feedback you have, what is the initial feedback you have received on this idea yes so when i uh, talked to uh, i had uh, three interviews with uh, uh, some uh, uh, one is uh, associate general manager one is general manager and one is uh, uh, leading uh, uh, the technology from mumbai branch so they uh, they were uh, said like it is a uh, really really important and they need to report every day uh, so one interview which i recently had was with uh, she was leading 31 branches and she said like she uh, is uh, uh, every day she need to uh, look at the feedbacks and she need to find that uh, who uh, it's like from every branch she is getting ten, uh, six to eight feedbacks where the target was much more. So uh, it is really important that how she's getting the feedback. Also, she finds that uh, feedbacks are not correct. It is something which is influenced by uh, by the by the people who are who, who are from the branch and have good relations. And when when she uh, uh, look at the 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 negative feedbacks, those are very less. So that is the challenge from the uh, from the banking side. And 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 that is really important to to maintain their NPA. Yeah. Got it. And yes, so, yeah. Who are your competitors? Like, uh, there are a lot of companies doing the facial recognition and this type of analysis. So who are your competitors? Yeah. So competitors are. Uh, I will say, uh, facial recognition is something different. Where it is uh, uh, being. Uh, uh, majorly uh, to identify a person and and to you know so so there are companies but from the emotional uh, uh, say uh, getting the customer sentiments there are uh, uh, two companies which I find uh, uh, especially so can you go on the slide in order to make it uh, more uh, or or I can just answer CogniQ and MyHub AI are the two where uh, MyHub AI is more towards uh, uh, side number nine yeah. So my help AI is more towards getting the uh, uh, the recognition from uh, uh, customers' sentiments related to uh, verbal analysis, where uh, where uh, CogniQ is uh, uh, taking care of facial sentiments. But when I say uh, in terms of edge-based solution, uh, that is where I see the competitive advantage from other companies, where uh, AI VID provides the edge-based solution, but they do not uh, uh, are in in terms of facial sentiment analytics. So that is what I see. Uh, and uh, uh, how much are you going to charge for your uh, services or product? So uh, from the products we we are looking, uh, we have uh, calculated in terms of cost of materials, like we need uh, uh, in terms of one camera, how much is going to cost. So it varies from 2000 to 4000, depends on the quality they, they want. Also in terms of edge base uh, uh, S server, which, which will be in premises and also uh, AWS uh, services, which we are going to uh, so I have uh, uh, our CTO, uh, uh, Dr. Sandeep, who, who who's uh, looking at from the technological aspect. So uh, Sandeep, if you want to add in this. I think the char charges of the per API, we are not not too much in the, uh, as, as part of that one, but we have not really calculated how much we can charge. But uh, really, we need very less. Uh, we have a very good margin. We don't need too much. Um, um, uh, we don't have too much cost on that one. We need only just some of one of the GPU that is on demand. We will take on on from the AWS as well the S3 bucket. That is, we will not keep the images uh, in the S3 bucket. We will just inference and we'll delete that one and save the memories. So only uh, that's one. But we are really not not calculated the what cost we and how much margin we will take. Hey, how are you thinking about privacy? That's why I'm saying that privacy means it is encrypted. Yeah. And whenever no, it will no, 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 uh, Sorry, no, not that way. What I mean by that is the approval, the agreement of a customer to be recorded. Yeah. So I have answer for that. Uh, uh, I validated this with some lawyers as well, as well as uh, banking people. So our ultimate goal is not to capture the fa face and, and facial parameters. Uh, all all our intention is to know that what is the sentiment. So what we are going to do, we are just going to record that particular moment and deleting it just after getting the results. So there is nothing we are keeping with us. It is just on the edge of the camera we are recording and just getting the result and deleting that. Then that just we are just analyzing, okay, somebody is happy, somebody is dissatisfied, somebody is satisfied. And what is the level of satisfaction? Okay. Uh, 
I want to add something in that one. Uh, most of the bankings have the CCTV cameras. They are uh, recording the the uh, and the event, whatever happening in the, in the, their banking sectors. So Thank that you. is not not a issue for that one. All right. Wonderful presentation, Group 17. Uh, now we would like to invite Group 19, Bioflames. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Rocky, an Army veteran, having transitioned to pursue passion in the field of agriculture, product design, and restoration. As a student of the Cohort 3 pre-incubation program, I take this opportunity to present a pitch deck by Group 19. At Surbi Agrotech and Innovation, we facilitate a way of life where tradition meets innovation and passion fuels progress. The problem hovers around issues of farmers and disposal of biomass and agriculture waste, their pending payments, transportation and middlemen. Our idea solves this problem for our farmers, industries and the environment with assured employment opportunities, a steady source of income, waste management by producing bio pellets, resulting in reducing carbon footprint. Our mission is to establish a biomass pellet plant in our village. Equal participation from stakeholders can help us create a success story. We assist by using biomass and agri-waste and blending cow dung and poultry litter to create bio pellets as an alternate fuel, which in present times is in high demand for meeting their energy needs in industries as well as The business model canvas has been crafted with intensive market research, validated by our mentors and covers all aspects in detail. We look forward to target both B2B and the B2C segment. However, priority is to engage with the B2B segment initially. UP alone has a potential surplus of 21.6 million tons biomass. Our project for 20 tons per day capacity will cost 6 crores, of which 1.2 crores is our margin money, and our ask is for 4.8 crores. We plan to generate revenue from sale of biomass pellets. Our vision is to be a leading company in the field of biomass pellets in next 5 years, in collaboration with farmers and FPOs who form the backbone of this industry. The value proposition is to provide the best GCV, quality, consistency and camaraderie. Present market demand in India 96,000 tons per day and the supply is low at 7,000 tons. We are in process to acquire LOI and tender with NTPC and UP Power Corporation to kickstart our production and will subsequently target individual consumers in the B2C segment. We wish to capture 1% of SAM amounting to 36.5 crores. We foresee several challenges ahead of us. There are 8 direct competitors and 136 new ones who are eager to join the bandwagon. Short-term and long-term future roadmaps have been prepared to monitor our progress and engage with the stockholders. Ground surveys followed by meetings and discussions have got our suppliers curious and a few testimonials are appended here. We are listed vendors on Summer Portal and receiving queries regularly. To mitigate seasonal variation in supply of raw material, we have adequate stocking facility and land bank to grow more. Post-competitive and SWOT analysis, we are confident that we can stand with our competitors. We plan to target B2B segment for volume, stability in terms of cash flow and create a place for us in the market. We have made little headway, but we have several miles to achieve. And we are confident that our venture has the potential to scale and we look forward to collaborate with investors and would be glad to resolve any queries. We express our gratitude to the organizers, our mentors and the administrative staff for empowering us and providing us a launch pad to validate and launch our idea. Thank you. Hey, your time starts now. Hey Rocky, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you are, you are positioning yourself as different from the competition? Uh, so sorry, your connection is garbled. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, my question was, how are you differentiating yourself? How are you different from your competition? Is it coming uh, through yet? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, the thing is that it's not very different. Uh, it is only about the blending and the technology being utilized to, uh, to uh, make use of the biomass to convert it into pellets. The demand gap is so much that uh, the government has gone ahead with the mission to complete this. And it is uh, oh. being proliferated all over the um, rural areas. So there is nothing new which I am doing, but it is only the blending. 
Yeah, quick one from me, really. Yeah, as you said, right, it seems like a really high demand area, right? So what are the risks that you see? Is there any risk uh, at all in, in your offer? Uh, sir, if, if we have uh, rightly planned and we uh, are getting orders already uh, without even having got a tender or a LOI done, um, I feel that uh, if the MRP or the MSP minimum support price goes below 2.23 rupees, which is at present, which has been fixed, that will be a problem. However, uh, that being the rate for 1000 kilocalories, uh, it's fetching us uh, uh, 9 rupees if we are selling in bulk. Whereas when we go to the private market, we fetch a rate of around 14 rupees for this product. So we have planned that subsequently. So as of now, uh, there is no risk. Yes, uh, we are able to recover the revenue within two and a half years time for whatever we are investing. Okay, thank you. Uh, any more questions, panelists? Are there economies of scale here uh, uh, or do you have to keep investing more to grow the business more? Oh. Certainly, sir. Uh, once we are able to capture the UP market and we are able to have this as a successful model, like uh, the plants are coming up in every tehsil, uh, these can be uh, thought of bringing out in every state within India, wherever there are gaps. So there is scaling possibility. I didn't uh, see, I didn't spend time on the slide which says top challenges, top issues. What are the top one or two things you are worried about? May I request Moon uh, to please get me on the slide number 18. One minute left. So there are there is hope that the agriculture uh, biomass can be utilized or is being presently utilized for other things like livestock feeding and soil mulch. So we do not actually have to uh, get into the the cattle feed uh, structure. Even staying away from that helps. However, these are the risks. Then okay. uh, seasonal demands meeting seasonal demands is another risk. Transportation okay. is, is another factor. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, that is time. Thank you, Group 19. Uh, that was a wonderful thank presentation. You, now we would like to go ahead and invite Group 20 uh, with the uh, group Headless E-Commerce. Devender, founder of OEX Tech Solutions Private Limited, and today I'm thrilled to introduce you to AI Code Pro, our innovative e-commerce platform designed to revolutionize how D2C brands and online sellers manage their product information and sales channels. In today's fast-paced e-commerce environment, many businesses are still relying on outdated methods like managing product data through Excel sheets. As companies expand with more SKUs and sales channels, this approach leads to errors, inefficiencies, and ultimately lost sale. Each sales channel has its own unique specifications, processes, and search algorithms, adding complexity to maintain visibility and consistency. Without the right tools, businesses are forced to allocate more resources, face delays in launching products to market, and suffer direct impacts on their revenue. AI Code Pro is designed to tackle these challenges directly. Our platform centralizes product data, assets, and SEO keywords, utilizes generative AI for optimized content creation tailored to each marketplace and offers unified multi-channel integration and simplified social media posting. By automating processes, optimizing product listings, and providing data-driven insights, AI Code Pro drives growth, reduces time to market, and helps businesses remain competitive in a rapidly evolving digital landscape. Technical and core features are first, headless e-commerce, second, artificial intelligence, and last, the automation. Let's talk about the key benefits of AI Code Pro. By boosting operational efficiency by 10x, accelerating product launches by 80%, and enhancing search visibility by 700%, 
AI Code Pro drives a 40% overall growth in sales. We've gained significant traction with six paid customers managing over 80,000 product listings and 700,000 images on our platform. Here's a success story from one of our clients. Their organic traffic grew from 400 to over 40,000 per month and they reached first page Google rankings for specific keywords within two to three months. Our core customers are 5 million D2C brands, 10 million online sellers, and 100K plus enterprises, and we support them in cost savings, reduction of complexity, and technical expertise. AI Code Pro is categorized into three types of membership. The global PIM market is projected to grow significantly, with a CAGR of 23.3% and the TAM of $24 billion worldwide. Here is the future market analysis of AI Code Pro with the competitor. Till 2028, we are aiming to get revenue of $7 million with an investment of $5 million. This is the competitor analysis of AI Code Pro among other PIM softwares. Our two-year roadmap outlines a strategic path of innovation, expansion, and market leadership. We are the proud members of these leading groups and incubators. We appreciate your time and attention today. For any questions or further information, feel free to ask. Thank you. Uh, your time starts now. Hey, Devendra, can I just request to pull up the competitive slide once more? Just wanted to understand you versus competition. Yeah, the slide number 11. The team, can you do or shall I do? Yeah, we have it up. Yeah, could you just highlight this? Yeah, so PIM code. Okay. So would you say PIMCOR is your main competition? Yes. So PIMCOR is an US-based company. Uh, yes. So they have uh, currently uh, capturing the market of uh, more than uh, 50 million. Yeah. Okay. And your differentiation from them is AI configuration. Okay. Yes. So basically, we will take care that the generated content is unique across the channel, as well as there is a no red flag from the search engine in terms of AI generated content. So that is the differentiate and we are providing, you can select what are the generative AI or model, or you would like to create in a customized LLM also in terms of selecting token also. So this is that feature. And this company is basically old of uh, five, seven, eight year and their architecture is totally different. Our architecture is built onto the headless commerce. Got it. Thank you. Quick one from me. So who owns the master data? Like, uh, does the company own or do you guys own, you know, whenever you do any sort of PIM implementation for these guys? Yeah. So we are basically, we are owning the data. And uh, because then the company just like work in uh, Walmart or H&M and, and work with, you know, one D2C brands also. So right now D2C brand owner mostly are a known techie guy. And AI is coming to the picture. AI only work when you have a data. So that is the reason we are capturing all product related data and do the analysis and run the AI on top of that things. Okay. So basically we are owning the data. Yeah. Thank you. There was one slide with the target customers. So uh, who, uh, so you mentioned you have six customer wins. So who, yes. uh, what is the segment where you won those customer okay. accounts? Yeah. So uh, we have an, uh, of, uh, six customers. One is, uh, two are the US-based uh, customers and three are India-based. Okay, uh, sorry, four are India-based. And most of the fast fast fashion, fashion jewelry, uh, diamond jewelry, uh, partsbaba.com means the electronic items. And there is a one, guys, is related to selling most of the Amazon-related multi-branded uh, uh, there. So they don't have any specific brand, but they have uh, consumer-based products. Okay, thanks. And how much, what was your sum? Uh, if, uh, you were flipping it quickly, so I couldn't. So, uh, so we are targeted to the 20, uh, 20 million. Uh, 20 million? Okay. Uh, four, four years. Four years, okay. And I guess your main focus would be the small enterprises, right? The big ones, they will have their own PIM. Uh, and big teams doing it themselves, right? Uh, 
Yes, yes. So first we are targeting that. But the recently I have done a, a incubation with SCL software. So they have an enterprise target and I'm becoming or might be I will be start uh, uh, you, uh, publish my uh, services to on that platform also. And later maybe uh, Oracle e-commerce or uh, commerce still, but not recently, but we have a plan that we can uh, go in that also SAP also. But initially, one and one uh, one and a half year, we mostly target to this uh, small and mid sized company. Yeah. All right, time's up. Thank you so much, Group Twenty. That was a fantastic presentation. Now I would like to go ahead and invite Group Twenty One, Krish Barters. Of uh, agri inputs, uh, the farmers, the agri input traders, and agri input companies are the major stakeholders. They have varied problems with regard to their uh, uh, input sales. Uh, so farmers, were in one case, they face issues. Um, is there any audio? Yes. And uh, they face a one percent market altogether. Then the, we have issues of you know agri input traders also who are suffer uh, because of the you know issues of forecasting. They are uh, stuck stuck up with lot of inventory when the season fails or there's an issue of monsoons and uh, because of you know a lot of pressure from the companies they have a lot of inventory left out in the marketplace with them this is estimated to be around 50,000 crore rupees at any given point of time in case of agri input companies you look at this uh, they have expensive gtms and then you have they have also suffered from you know issues of poor sales and then bad debts and thing you know and uh, there's a high cost of customer equation so if you look at this domain of agri inputs, this is around $20 billion come, you know, uh, sector altogether. And they are the ones who are instrumental in, in the country's uh, food grain production, which is around $375 billion. So this this segment is really very important for everybody to focus upon. Uh, so we, what we have arrived at basically is a solution which is like uh, is an e-commerce marketplace. Uh, it's an aggregation model marketplace with B2B and B2C features. Uh, by the name of krishivaters.com, we here ensure a lot of, you know, uh, benefits to the B2B in B2B operations and B2C operations, wherein the biggest benefits in case of B2B would be the EBITDA increase, and uh, uh, in case of B2C, it would be the lowest price of products and fastest delivery of the products in the in the local market, especially with the farmers, you know, getting a choice of the brands and the products because of multi-vendor, uh, you know, a feature of the of the of the solution which we are providing here on the platform. The product is already ready. We have no revenue as of now. We we are targeting the FPOs, the agreement traders, the expression companies and business affiliates. Market size is, as I told you, is one and a half lakh crores and of which we have 50,000 crores worth of metal is lying on the market as always. And then we are looking for a, you know, a market here in India, especially with the states of UP and uh, Uttarakhand where the market size probably is, remains to be uh, around for 5,000 crores. That competitors are like Rostar, they have big heart and all when we have this competition matrix wherein the we, we can always say that this uh, this company of ours is uh, truly B2B because it offers a lot of convenience and affordability in terms of prices and all. And it's a very uh, agile model wherein, uh, you know, you have uh, multi, uh, plenty of vendors being there on the platform and plenty of buyers who, especially the farmers and the FPOs who will be benefiting from this low market, low price uh, of products availability on the platform. If you look at the competitive advantage, we have a asset light model. It's a do-it-yourself kind of model. It's a, it's a, it's, it's the model is it has economic scale, economic scope, and it's you know it's embedded with a lot of data and all, and it's, it has got a unique business model, uh, especially with when the sales are supported by business affiliates who are going to be working on the platform against some kind of commission. So these are the lot of benefits which I'm not going to detail now, but then plenty of business issues getting improved because of this model. Then this is a business model canvas, which to be sure I have described everything in terms of how the platform is going to be looking like in terms of USPs and all. Especially if you look at the revenue model here, the revenue model is commissions, uh, subscriptions and strategic alliances, uh, earnings, especially with regard to alliances with the small companies. And uh, we have a roadmap which is ready for the future, which we are going to expand into reverse auction and you know modules where the barters also start taking place on the platform to sustain the output market uh, of the farmers. Cash flow is ready, but then we'll explain you maybe at a later stage. Expectations from the from the I am Lucknow uh, chapter here in, in Noida is that we have we want to have fit and possibility evaluations done, financial support and angel investors and constant mentoring and feedbacks. 
team is of two. Mr. Chinnis Gupta is 30 years experience in this line of IT, and I am uh, 30 years experience in uh, areas of domain uh, with a lot of sales and marketing experience. And uh, therefore, I thank you for being patiently listening to what I presented here. Thanks a lot. Your time starts now. I was just uh, curious to hear a little bit more about your, uh, you know, the top one or two revenue sources. Can you just explain or, or describe those? You're on mute, I think. The revenue stream is going to be missed mostly from commissions, uh, which we are going to charge to the buyers and sellers both. It will be a very small kind of permission because uh, here in the domain, it is going to be mostly trading, initially to start with. To start with. Mostly brands would not be giving that kind of margin to us. And uh, it is a kind of a situation wherein uh, the traders, mostly the agreement traders would be there involved. And we do not wish to charge them much more. Rather, it will be plowback of whatever we earn. Mostly, it will be going back to the business affiliates who are going to be working on the platform on commission basis. And to, to the traders as, you know, as incentives, mostly. In the initial year, to acquire more customers, I would suggest. But then we, as a matter of, uh, you know, strategic alliance, we're going to barter with special companies, companies who, are, who have got very good product line, but they do not have enough money to go to the market. And therefore, they are the ones who are, because of this sales force, which we're which we going to create over a period of time, they are the ones who will help them to achieve their larger goals of, you know, sales and marketing. And therefore, we would cut down their GTM cost by almost 50%. That is where we're trying to say that we the beta increase would be happening for the B2B business operations. And uh, since there will be multi-vendor uh, this thing uh, possibilities, so therefore uh, prices would be low on the platform. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good one from me, maybe then. So, so in terms of like working capital and uh, cost, right? So will you own the stock or is it like more you buy this, uh, you match the buyers with the sellers and you you only kind of get them transferred directly? Yes, it is more of a marketplace. So therefore we are not, uh, you know, buying anything. We are rather we are encouraging commerce to happen on the platform uh, by by bringing a lot of, you know, sellers to the platform and maybe uh, engaging the farmers and the, you know, traders to come on the platform, buy a stuff which is like, you know, available on the platform because of, you know, as I told you, the, the, the inventory lying in the marketplace is too big always at any given time. So the, these are materials cannot be you know sold otherwise unless until they are brought online. In any case, Indian agriculture is like you know very poor in terms of uh, uh, you know the kind of market share which the online businesses have today is less than one percent. So in any case, this has a huge potential to actually bring about a lot of change in the in the agri supply chain. Yeah. Um, so can you describe more about what is your differentiation? Uh, you mentioned truly B two B. Yeah, I uh, get it from the platform point of view, but uh, like the existing competitors already have market share. So how do you compete? So so nobody comes close to us in terms of pricing because uh, we have allowed market forces to take the prices up. We are not deciding prices for anything. It is all the vendors who, the market forces will decide the prices on the platform. So since it's a multi-vendor uh, platform, so therefore everybody uh, would be, you know, putting their prices up. Across the country, we have eight and a half lakh distributors or sellers in the, you know, in the country. And uh, they are the ones, they can always put their prices up. And there would be a lot of special companies who can put the prices up. So therefore, it, it all depends on the market forces. So unlike other platforms where the prices are fixed, more or less, because they buy the stuff and then they display on the platform. One minute left. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, maybe quickly. So how, you know, as you said, right, it's a very immature market. So how, you know... When do you see, you see the market maturing? I guess it's educating the market versus starting to make revenue, right? So what's kind of what's your take on that? So the model is very really agile since uh, it is very cost-effective model because we are just, you know, uh, all the expenses mostly are on towards the commission side. So uh, because, of my, because of my association with this industry for the last 30 years, I know the market in and out in terms of the domain. There are a lot of people, you know, business associates, when I talk about, they are the differentiators going to be on the platform because... These people are, you know, in the price band, or in the salary band of 12,000 rupees to 30,000 rupees. They can double up in uh, their income by coming on platform, doing the KYC and by being started selling, so help us, you know, start selling things. So they are the ones who are going to be a huge differentiator, unlike other platforms where they do, they do, they do not have people on commission basis, rather they have people on, on salaries and wages and things like that. So that is going to be a big differentiator, yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, hey, just one quick uh, question. So, uh, I mean, my understanding is that, uh, and this is like, uh, maybe the world has uh, changed, but my understanding is that farmers are not that technology savvy. No, so no, no. How so are that... you going to address it? Well, the farmers today, uh, maybe the, the kind of penetration we have in terms of the technology, like, you know, mobile phones, smartphones, they are a big number. We have got 94 crore, you know, uh, people using uh, mobile phones. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure the young generation of farmers, they have all the stuff uh, with them. So they can always be with UPI penetration, with all the stuff. So technology is being used al already. So it's mm -hmm. just that a migration in terms of, you know, where they buy the stuff from. So when the value is there in terms of lowest prices, I do believe, Farmers will come to the platform as such. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Time's up. Thank you, Group 21. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Now we would like to go ahead and invite Group 3B, uh, Team uh, Virtual Detox Center. And this is an all girls team from Andhra Mahila Sabha College. pursuing my bachelor's in business administration at Andhra Mahila Sabha Arts and Science College. In our group, there are five members, but I am taking the initiative to present our project. Pause. Recharge your mind, renew your life. Firstly, I would like to ask a question. Could you live without your phone for an hour, a day or perhaps longer? Be ready to answer this question honestly in further video. Our idea is all about to disconnect individuals from digital devices and online activities. Do you know about 197.3 million people of our country are facing mental challenges? The problem which we are going to solve is mobile addiction, which is leading to nomophobia. It is a psychological condition in which people have fear of being detached from their mobile. It might start as a harmless few minutes spent on the mobile, but gradually the time increases and people begin to spend hours on mobile. This could lead to mood swings, sleep disorders, temper tantrums and more on. The solution is to engage your tailored prerequisite activities at our detox center. This is our product roadmap. In our first phase, we will initially launch an application through which we would like to gather people facing mental challenges on one platform and build a community of like-minded people. Through our application, we will provide online counseling and we will also provide interesting deto digital detox challenges which keep our customers engaged on our application. Then we will launch a detox center where digital overwhelmed people and people who feel stressed out would come in and enjoy by participating in some creative activities. Later, we will focus on providing tailored treatment plans for the ones facing mental challenges due to addictions. Our treatment plans are based on cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. CBT is based on connections between your thoughts, emotions and behaviors and how they can influence an individual. It is a short term treatment plan. We follow certain techniques. I guess by now you are ready with your answer. If it is yes, then you have to take up digital detox challenge. If it is a no, well and good. Most wellness centers only focus on anxiety, anger, stress and sleep management. But we would also like to include internet addiction and nomophobia to the list. It helps to take a break, focus on mental health, connect with like-minded people and start living a life of reality. Our idea belongs to digital overwhelmed individuals, technology addicts, parents and families, students and mental health seekers. Financial planning. In phase one, that is through an app, our services start from rupees 99 only and go up to 499 for subscription. In phase two, that is through Detox Center, we have various activities to keep you engaged. We will require an amount of 1850,000 to start working on an idea. We aspire to expand our reach, give personalized treatment, build a community and create awareness. Our value proposition lies in ability to provide accessible, personalized and effective support for individuals, tailored treatment and to achieve lasting lifestyle changes. Our TAM total addressable market is $3 billion and our serviceable obtainable market is $2.7 billion. Whereas our serviceable av available market is $2.25 billion. We will promote our services through social media influencers and MSME enterprise. The problem which we are going to solve is very huge and it is increasing at a rapid rate. Internet addiction also leads to cyberbullying and the victims are at higher risk of depression and suicidal tendency. Our competitors are evolved, you are those that made I will and Kenegi well-being. Our strength is focusing on homophobia, our weakness is scalability, our opportunity is entering market early and our threat is big player entering into the market. In the first year, we might not be making profits as we are more focused on attracting customers, building community and promoting our services. But from the next year, we will gradually start making profits. Thank you. 
your time starts now. Hey, uh, so um, uh, just curious uh, to avoid the mobile mobile addiction or to cure that, like why is the first step to actually have an application? And why not start sir, more with an offline approach? Good evening, sir. So our idea of set, uh, starting an application is like uh, setting up a detox center is a huge uh, risk factor is involved with it. And uh, marketing and all also require a lot. So initially, we would like to launch an application and grow our community of like-minded people and also help uh, the mental uh, cha mental cha um, people who are facing mental challenges. So initially, uh, like it takes less investment. So we are focusing on an app. Yeah, maybe quick one for me. I think absolutely it's uh, it's one of our biggest challenges, right, as a society going forward. So how how mature do you think the market is to actually start, you know, using uh, services like your your organizations? I mean, so who who is the who is the buyer? Is it the mentally health challenged person or someone in that family, you know, who who can make the decision for them, or what, what kind of what do you see there? So the one who is digitally overwhelmed is our customer. And the one who is uh, really facing any mental challenges, like anxiety, sleep management, like social media addiction has been a big problem, is being a big problem these days. So the one who is addicted to his mobile phone uh, is our customer, sir. And how do you plan to, uh, 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 like, get your word out? Uh, educate people uh, we will run our campaigns we will promote through uh, social media only like our uh, potential customer lies on social media 24 by 7 so we need to pr promote on social media and uh, we would also like to create awareness in colleges uh, schools through government institutions uh, etc so those you will be doing in person like the uh, promotion in colleges and institutes and yeah all? in person we will be doing them but uh, once we launch the app, then we will start uh, slowly start growing awareness among the people. As uh, this mental wellness uh, is really a taboo in India, like many people consider themselves um, like being uh, uh, tagged them as mental means they uh, personally feel bad. So we need to remove that social taboo first. How do you plan to acquire the first customer? Like who, who do you go to and like do people self-identify themselves that they need help and then they do this or what's the go-to-market path? Sir, firstly, we would, uh, once we launch our app, then we we need to, pro we, we will promote through social media. So uh, like the person who is, uh, uh, whose screen time is more than 16 to 17 hours, like we will go in such a way, like uh, if your screen time is more, and if you are not being uh, detached from your phone, like if you are having some, um, if you're like, we are going to plan a service, uh, like questionnaire kind of thing. And then we will uh, reach out uh, the customers with the questionnaire. And then uh, on that on that basis, the an on, on the answers, we will calculate the, uh, like uh, through the, sorry, yeah. sir, I'm uh, if a I bit may, uh, Yeah. So targeted ads is really a good thing that's going on right now. Like Instagram and Facebook, we see whatever we search in the Google, whatever we put in our phone, targeted ads really come up on our field. So that is the first uh, uh, like go-to strategy that we're uh, going to implement. Maybe who has really good conscience about them, who really want to take care about them, they'll be taking the first step. One minute left. Um, any other questions, panelists? No, I don't have any other questions. Good presentation. Right. That'll be it. Thank you so much. Group 3B, uh, very well done with your presentation. Now we'd like to have the final team for today, Group 21, with their presentation, SkyNect.
what if I say LinkedIn in the coming months will try their best to acquire this? Sounds interesting, right? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Samad Simha, the founder of Skynet. So, what exactly are we solving in Skynet? Or what is the problem statement? Um, as we raise to become the startup capital of the world, this huge startup ecosystems market is very disrupted. One of the main important parameters to building anything is networking and collaborations. Coming down to the specific problems, many people with great ideas struggle to turn them into businesses due to lack of resources, expertise, or validation, or basically finding the right people at the right time or the resources. Investors struggle to find quality startups to invest in, while founders often lack expertise or validation. Various stakeholders waste resources on advertising to reach their target market. So due to these reasons and many more reasons, 90% of the startups fail. So reasons being a lack of market need for their product or service, poor business models and financial mismanagement, weak team dynamics, including insufficient leadership and experience, contributing significantly to the failure. So I would like to introduce you to Skynet. A Skynet is a diverse networking platform where the entire startup ecosystems comes under one roof for collaborations and meaningful networking. So how do we do it? Skynet is a platform that unites the startup ecosystem by facilitating collaborations between startups, mentors, investors, domain experts, product developers, etc. With our AI recommendation systems, users can easily find the right connections while investors can efficiently identify promising startups. Additionally, Skynet keeps users informed about current marketing trends networking events or opportunities creating a centralized hub for the people in the ecosystem so skynet basically connects founders investors mentors startups ideas events and much more like product developers marketing people legalities everything a startup needs so coming to our unique selling proposition what is our usb this app simplifies the business networking by connecting users with the right people saving time and resources that's happening right now offers a comprehensive platform for the startup ecosystem to access global opportunity stay updated and connect with the right people anywhere in the world and also our unique blog based personality personality recommendation systems focuses on fostering growth without the need of active searching so what it does is it's literally it will study uh, the the human behavior from the user and find the right people by matching it so coming to numbers, let's talk numbers. Uh, international market size of the startup ecosystem as of September 2022 is 150 million startups. While 50 million start new startups are registered annually, that means 1,000, 1,37,000 startups emerge daily. So coming coming to India's growth rate uh, in the startup capitals only that's been only increasing. So as you can see, the statistics that have provided in the uh, PPT. So these are the statistics of Bangalore, Delhi, and Mumbai, the top three uh, cities for the startup hubs. Now coming to the valuation, I'm valuing this company at 75 million. And this is not just numbers, these are calculated predictions. Uh, taking into consider consideration of the market size, our unique value proposition, revenue potentials, and competitive landscape. And uh, of course, uh, we, we have competitors. Our direct competitors are the list that have shown and the indirect competitors being LinkedIn as one of our main uh, competitors. Uh, but what right now these competitors are doing is the sectors are very disrupted and they're serving to each sectors. Let's say push start is just serving for entrepreneurs, whereas coffee mug is serving only for the higher management executive people. Whereas connect club is just for, uh, let's say product developers. And LinkedIn is basically now it's basically just a employee and employer interface. So what uh, Skynet is trying to do is bringing everyone into one platform where they can reach out to any people and with just an idea, they can turn it into a company and nurture it. So coming to the team, this is me, Samar Sima, the founder of Skynet. And with me, I have Gautam, the co-founder of Skynet. The development is taken, by, taken care by uh, Karthik. And the marketing is taken care by Punya as she is heading the marketing team. And with her, we have Tasmiya. We also have two more people who is who are working under development. So yeah, this is Skynet in a world full of thinkers. Be a doer. Thank you. Your time starts now. 
Hey, Samar, thank you for the presentation. Tell us more about how you will um, how you will inspire and motivate uh, the right members to join the platform. So right now, uh, as we are having a team execution of uh, startups that are registering in India, uh, we are trying to go for social media marketing, uh, where we are uh, just collecting to, for the initial customers. We are just uh, concentrating on students. And uh, what we are doing right now is we are going to every uh, universities in Bangalore and uh, we are teaming up with them uh, with their uh, incubation cells so that the initial customers will be on the app. So once we get uh, these students, student entrepreneurs, product developers, then we'll be approaching, uh, 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 let's say, investors and mentors. But right now Got we it. have around 150 startups that is registered and around 70 investors. Sorry, what, what did you say last part? I missed it. So right now uh, we have around 150 startups that are registered and around 70 investors and 30 mentors. Okay, got it. Thank you. How do you connect uh, the startups and the uh, investors? Do you do some analysis in between? Yes, ma'am. For, uh, for, uh, first off, we are going to take uh, what uh, we are going to have a separate page where uh, every sector will tell what they actually want. Let's say uh, uh, an, a startup who is working on agri-tech needs an investor and we have an investor who wants to invest in agri-tech. So we are going to connect them. And also our recommended system is based on personality. So we're, we are going to categorize people into personality A, B, C, D, and then we're going to team up, team, team them up so that uh, the collaborations will be stronger and uh, the traction is better. Okay. Uh, Samarth, I have a clarification and a question. Clarification, when you say valuation, are you talking about like addressable market or the, the valuation of the company is 75 million? That's the clarification. And the second question is around the pricing. Like how are you going to make money out of this product? Sir, uh, that was the valuation. 75 million was the valuation. Uh, revenue streams, well, right now we are targeting for ad-based revenue. And uh, once we get around some premium users, then we're going to go for, uh, we're going to charge some premium uh, uh, charges for uh, premium features, better reach and premium features, basically. Got it. Okay. And you are a seed stage yeah. company, like are you funded or not yet? Uh, right now, uh, we just got funded from uh, Sanjeev Burnwar, uh, the founder of Misho, and we are in talks okay. with Nitin Kamath. Uh, is, he funded around 50k just for the prototype. So the prototype is ready, just got ready yesterday. And right now we are going to test it on Bangalore grounds. And uh, once we get some traffic on the prototype, we are going to... And that's like the 50k investment is valued with 75 million as the company startup valuation? No, sir. No, sir. That, that was just for prototypes. Okay. Okay. Got it. One minute left. Just a quick one so, from me. Yeah, go so, ahead. Go ahead. Please. You go ahead, Kat, Kat K. Uh, no, so just a quick question. The uh, 50K uh, investment is based on the safe notes or convertible notes. Is that correct? Um, can you come again? So the safe, uh, the 50K investment is not based on equity, uh, as you mentioned. So it's based on the safe oh, notes or... It's not based on EPD, ma'am. It has just given to test it, uh, build the prototype and test it on the Bangalore grounds. And once we show him okay. some traffic, then he's going to invest uh, for equity. Okay. All right. And that is time. So thank you so much, you, 221, for the wonderful presentation. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, thank you. So now we will get started with the other phase of today's events. Now, so congratulations to all the teams for their outstanding efforts. Each team has pitched exceptionally well. Now I would like to ask the judges to move into the deliberation room to arrive at the final decision. All the judges, you will be seeing a join breakout room button on your Zoom window right about now. Please go ahead and click on join when you see it.
we'll wait for all the panelists to join the breakout room and then we'll get started. All righty. So now I would like to go ahead and ask uh, Pooja from IML to walk you through the incubation process and explain cohort 4.0. Over to you, Pooja. Thank you, Mehar. Just wait. Allow me to share my screen first. Sure. Hope my screen is visible. Yeah. So once again, thank you. Thank you, Mehar. And congratulations to all the presenters. You presented really well. So now, what uh, to how and what would be the further step? To make it further, uh, we at I am Lucknow Enterprise Incubation Center, we are supported by Department of Science and Technology and Startup in India Initiative. So we are providing startups as just shared by my, uh, I don't know there's Bajpayee sir. Last year, uh, we uh, uh, organized the cohort 2.0 with the number of participants, but were like more than 150 participants were there. Until now, we have uh, pre-incubated more than 350, 350 participants. Out of that, this uh, 6X plus participants, uh, startups are incubated with us and others are also getting advice, the right advice, the right mentoring from us. So how we are making it, how startups or individuals can come to us, reach out to us and what is the impact incubation process. So to take this further, I'm just taking walking with the, this presentation. So uh, I am Lucknow Enterprise Incubation Center is supported by our board of directors, just chaired by Professor Archana Shuklaji. She is the director of I am Lucknow and chairperson of I am Lucknow EIC. Mr. Sandeep Shivasava, Mr. Rupa Shatish, they are the board members of I am Lucknow EIC. CEO, uh, Mr. Sandeep Srivastava, he is the CEO and founder of People Fusion. And Ms. Dupa Satish is a country head in this land bank. As a FIC, we have a board member, Professor Ashish Dubey, sir. He is a faculty in charge of I am Lucknow Enterprise Incubation Center and a professor of marketing at I am Lucknow. Professor Kaushikar Banopadhyay ji, he is a board member I am Lucknow EIC and professor of sustainability at I am Lucknow. In the board member, we have our managing director, Mr. Yamani Bhushan Pandiji. I am Lucknow EIC. Along with the board of director, we currently, we have a team of 17 with us. So we believe in lean team and working in supporting more than 120 startups with this team. To deep dive into more about like what I am Lucknow Enterprise Incubation is when we established ourselves. So we incorporated ourselves in 2013 at I am Lucknow. And later we were supported by like initially we were supported by uh, our host institute I am Lucknow. And we relaunched and restructured at I am Lucknow Noida campus in 2019. We are supported by NSTDEB, Department of Science and Technology, Start UP, and Government of Uttar Pradesh under Start in UP policy. We primarily focus on technology, innovation, disruption, and transformation area. So more work into R and D is also welcoming. So what uh, incubation? If we talk about the kind of uh, the number of startups just shared by in the pitch as they are growing, so as the number of incubators as well. So how, uh, what different we are doing? So if you go through these, uh, this presentation, here you are observing few circles in uh, blue and few in orange. So you'll notice that the blue is a typical incubation support, what an incubation center provide. So as we are providing stage focused startup programs, mentorship connect, research labs, uh, virtual sessions, capacity building sessions, networking opportunities, and meets. Apart from that, we are also providing funding support, 
Super, we do have a supercomputer, IoT device, and 3D printer fabrication labs where startups can sit and if not, if they are physically present. And the beauty is they can avail all these benefits by sitting at their own place. So they can, we work in hybrid models. Startups can avail all the services, all the incubation services at uh, sitting at like at their virtual place. We also have a startup toolkit of worth more than 3.5 crores, which we provide to our all our incubated startups. Along with that, we do have a help desk. So help desk is a unique concept where we are providing help desk in terms of legal, IPR, in terms of accounts and CA work. So help desk are helping startup founders in their basic requirements, identifying, let's say they want to take a trademark. So they can provide, uh, we connect them with our help desk working into uh, these fields and they are providing services in much reduced rate than the market rate. Apart from that, we have a unique uh, corporate access engagement program where we are providing connects, sometimes the paid pilots or pilot opportunities with the corporates and the industries. So we help startups at every stage, starting from the, I would say, pre-incubation to idea to MVP, that is uh, making the MVP, refining the MVP, you know, so that uh, achieving that MVP excellence. We do have a two-year flagship program of incubation and all to all that to acceleration program, providing them the right support into market validation, helping them out in prototype testing, opportunity to pilot, go to market, peer-to-peer -peer interaction, helping them out in finding the right product fit and customer acquisitions and other compliances as well. To talk more about our services, for uh, taking the time constraint, I'm taking only one service that is about the incubation support we are providing to startups, not touching other parts of it, the training, consulting we are doing, but only the relevant, which is the incubation support overall we are providing. So overall, the first initiative which we have is the startup engagement program, where we have four incubation program. First is a pre-incubation startup program, where for which we are here. So this is a three months typical capacity building to four months of total program targeted to students, to professionals, to aspiring entrepreneurs, to anyone who wants to refine their business pitch or to understand the entire startup ecosystem. This is a certification based virtual program where we provide support if uh, any our pre-incubation participants wants to visit incubation center, they are all are welcome to do that. They can connect with us. So uh, we provide an end-to-end -end startup life cycle and startup ecosystem environment in this uh, program. Until now, we have incubated more than 356 participants. And as shared earlier, we are glad to uh, share that, that most, more than 60% participants are women entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs and uh, in the last cohort uh, we have uh, we proudly thanks our uh, moonpreneur partners for providing uh, opportunity to our uh, pre-incubation participants and startup founders to pitch in their investors network in USA where two of our previous cohort participants received uh, the, uh, the investors' uh, interest as well, as well as the amount as a token money from the pre-incubation program. Next program which we have is the ideation program that is, as the name suggests, idea to MVP. Here we take registered startups with minimum idea uh, ready to product designing to development till MVP and provide them MVP excellence with the right capacity mentoring support for six months and later on with the Market Connect and the networking opportunities and funding opportunities with within from our uh, um, areas as well as from our own funds as well as the supporting funds from the VCs and our angel network. This program ideation, as I mentioned, is providing the right support so uh, into the product development through finding your PMF. 
Till now, we have incubated 25 plus ideation stage startups with us. The third pre uh, program is the business incubation program. This is a two year, 18 months to two years uh, long business incubation program where we primarily take MVP ready startups and help them to commercialize and further grow. Here the concept, uh, the uh, support provided during all the training programs are customized and need based as well. Here we provide in all our incubation programs, we provide the market connect, business opportunities and funding opportunities as well. In our business incubation program, we have more than 125 plus startups on board till now. Next, we have a startup acceleration program where we take only the growth stage startups and the duration of the program would, is around nine to 12 months. This is this program acceleration program is totally target uh, based on the sector oriented. And uh, we have 30 plus accelerated startups till now. And we provide the market access and global expansion to these startups and registered under our startup acceleration program. So these are the four programs. If you feel that you comes under the ideation program or to incubation program, you can directly apply to those programs. Now, to move further, what would be the process? The question is comes like how to apply it and what is the process of applying there? So what you can do is first we initiate the call for application. So currently, as we shared earlier as well, the call for application for idea to MVP for her 2.0 as well. So currently we do have a call for applications open for 101. Once uh, an idea submitted their application there, we screen and shortlist that idea. That I screening and shortlisting help happens in multiple le levels. It is a two to four levels before the pitching happens. So it is an internal first jury member selection, then the senior management committee sets to just again review that uh, the, those screenings and then comes for the final pitching. In the final pitching, the jury members comprises primarily few external members, the jury members, those are the industry connects along with the two internal members. This is how the main pitch is based on uh, jury members recommendation <clears throat> we uh, on select the startup and finally the onboarding process starts once the incubation uh, once the startup is onboarded then we provide the incubation support where we uh, after onboarding we do a detailed venture diagnosis and based on that venture diagnosis discussion we identify the red flags in the organization in the startup where they are facing challenges and we try to work on the those challenges with the help of right mentoring, training, business connect, market connect support. And at the same time, simultaneously, we connect with the startup toolkit, startup help desk as well, so that a holistic support can be provided. For the initial, based on the tenure of the incubation program, once the initial training capacity building is done, so that once we... Uh, we push our startup into the investors network. They get the right opportunity. They can hit the right opportunity and grab that. So for that, we do the initial capacity building based on the feedback we have received from uh, during diagnostic panel and from the uh, uh, investors point of uh, spots. So after that, we send, uh, we provide them the support on investment support. That is through our funding opportunity the our funding own fund we have a corpus of uh, one crore fund for per startup one startup can avail maximum up to one crore from our eic fund to sisf and startup nidhi seed fund apart from that we do have uh, various funds like sidbi we have we have uh, about to receive a uh, exam and we have various connects from uh, VCs and angel, we have a very unique program in Vestopreneur. So where uh, we create and curate angel investors. So these angel investors also help and support our startups in terms of uh, their growth. So we connect our startups, incubated startups with the right angel investors also. 
So this is the whole incubation process, how we help any startup in building that. These are our startup incubated startups, which Bajpay Sir just mentioned. These are from the, uh, the journey from pre-incubation to incubation is really great. This is the overall impact we have created over a year, over the years. We have a, a cumulative valuation of more than 2000 plus and uh, more than 2500 plus startups we have incubated with more than 35 plus uh, patents we have. And overall our startups have directly created more than thousand jo jobs. So this is all possible with the help of our more than 70 plus strategic partners with us. So with this, once again, we would like to mention as the launch has been uh, done with the, uh, by Bajpay sir, do share the information. This uh, information is also shared on social media as well. Do share this information and spread the word across to make to develop this entrepreneurial mindset. With this, thank you. Um, yes, thank you so much. Uh, Meher, can we take questions? I think... Yes, uh, if anybody has questions. I think Group 21 uh, connect. Uh, yeah, you can unmute your mic. Uh, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Can we please uh, get an email on the applications when they're open, ma'am? Yes, sure. In fact, we so have we shared happen. earlier idea to MVP, but yes, we will connect with you and share the information with you. All right. Thanks, thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. And uh, now the final moment is here. Uh, without much ado, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Arunodha Bajpayee to announce the results. And the results will be in the, in the order of three to one. Right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share. Here we go. Okay. Uh, the, now the final uh, three would be announced. Before that, I would like to add uh, one thing that I have heard all the pitches. And since morning, I have been, uh, you know, I have today uh, listened to almost 32 pitches throughout the day. And uh, finally, I was part of this program. So uh, all these uh, pitches which I've heard are all worthy of being, uh, you know, supported. And uh, my uh, offer is to everyone to, you know, apply to the incubation program. I'll We will see where your fitment can be done. Through our various programs, we will try and support. Now comes the final result. So the number three is from Agri Field, Krishi Bhatta. Mr. Prajesh Nandan Patak, congratulations to you. And uh, fantastic model. Big round of applause. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. Well deserved. Now, the second one uh, is, of course, uh, from e commerce, headless e commerce. Devendra Kumar. Thank you. Thank you. Good idea. I think uh, good uh, scalability I can see. Well done. Well done. Big round of applause. Yeah, there we have him. Congratulations, yes. Headless E-Commerce. Congratulations, Congratulations, Devendra. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much for recognizing me. And finally, the, uh, you know, first uh, is uh, Bioflames. Thank you, sir. In all, all aspects, social as well as scalability and all parameters you are hitting on nail on the head. And one uh, area, uh, you know, whenever we, we will meet, uh, we'll try and see how we can sit with each of you uh, and support you in uh, further refining 
the business model. Right. Come on, Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. And uh, we have social impact next. Next is, uh, of course, uh, you know, all women team in social impact. And they are, you know, virtual detox. Although idea was great and, uh, you know, the most relevant problem they are solving. And all women team, congratulations to them. Congratulations, virtual detox team 3B. Well done, everybody. Thank you, sir. Now over to Mihir. Uh, so. Absolutely. Uh, so again, a big, big congratulations to all the winners today. And again, congratulations to all the participants as well, because everyone's a winner. You all did really, really well today. And the presentations were fantastic. And again, thank you to all the panelists for being here and making this event a huge success. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bajpai, uh, for your part in, the, in this uh, event as well. And uh, if uh, anybody from our team would like to share any final words, uh, then we can conclude. Congratulations to all the winners once again. Thank you so much. And uh, you have the information for the fourth uh, cohort as well. Uh, so you can get in touch. Uh, and... Uh, Thank you again. We shall see you very soon. Thank you again for coming today. And uh, we hope that you have a fantastic weekend ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Spread the word, Thank you. Spread the word of Thank entrepreneurship. Uh, Board 4 is here. Uh, tell your friends, colleague, everyone to join. Vishal, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.